Hi, my name is Samer. I'm a second year MBA and a BCC consultant, and I love consulting cases. Great. Hey, my name is Leonardo. I'm a first year MBA. I'm going to strategy and for the internship, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Great, so uh, we're going to start off with a, a case here called Great Burger, and um, it's a case I chose because it was my first case when I came to business school, and I think it's a, it's a great representation of, of all the key elements uh, that are involved in a consulting case interview. You ready? Always. Okay. Our client is Great Burger. They are a fast food chain that competes with McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, um, and all the other ones that you've seen. They're the fourth largest in the world in terms of number of stores in operation. And um, similar to, to their competitors, their menu is uh, burgers, fries, um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner items, uh, and they serve combos as well as a la carte options. As part of their growth strategy, Great Burger is looking at a potential target known as Heavenly Donuts. They're a growing donut producer uh, with a U.S. and international presence. They've hired you to help them decide, is this a good idea? Should they acquire Heavenly Donuts or not? Great. Sounds interesting. So our clients, Great Burger, they are competing with McDonald's and they are a pretty large chain. They want us to evaluate if they should should or not buy heavy donuts. Is that right? That sounds right. Great. May I have may I take, ask a few questions before we start? Sure. Uh, are they considering to acquire the entire chain of donuts, or they are targeting a specific region in the world? Yeah, the the entire chain. The entire chain. Awesome. Do you see any kind of the regulation barrier that they have to face because they can become such a huge chain or it's not important to this case? Not that we know of, but uh, that's always a good consideration. Awesome. Great. And do they have a time frame, a time limit to, nope. to make this acquisition? No. Nope. No? Great. So, may I, may I take a while so I can build a structure on how to solve this case? Absolutely. Great, thank you. Okay, I think I'm ready to go. Okay. So basically what I'm trying to evaluate here is how much we should pay for for heavily done it and then we can we can evaluate if it's a good business or not. So in order to do that I would like to go through four main aspects here. The first one is investment. So how much we sh we would we would be willing to invest in this chain how we are going to make this evaluation, so are we going to use present value or are we going to use a multiplier? The, sec the second aspect are the revenues. So I would like to know how is the revenues of have we done it working, so how much done they are selling, what's the price, if there is any seasonality. And then we can go into costs. The cost, I, I divided it into fixed and variable, and we can go into the, de the details while you go through the case. And with these three buckets, we capture the financial aspects of this acquisition, but usually it's good to take a look into the cultural fit as well. So do both companies have this similar values, similar cultures? That's something that we should take into account because it might be a qualitative risk to this acquisition. The last aspect that it would be important to include, and I think that might be a case, 
are synergies both in revenues and costs because these are additional values that we can get by acquiring these companies. How do you feel about this structure? I think it's a, uh, you've laid out some really good points so far and I'm glad you mentioned synergies actually. I'd love to share with you uh, this data sheet and have a second to take a look at it. But the, the basic question I want to ask first is what potential synergies do you see in this acquisition? Uh, synergies again defined as either um, revenue generating or cost saving synergies. Oh, great. So here is the spreadsheet. We can see on the columns that we have Great Burgers and heavily done it. It's interesting to see that Great Burgers is actually five, almost five times bigger than heavily done it, and heavily done it has operations almost only in North America, just a few stores in Europe, so probably the synergies will be concentrated here in the US or Canada. Mm, the financials of both companies are in this second table, so we have store sales, key expenses, and profits, so they have similar profit margins. Sounds interesting. So let's, I'm gonna try to answer your question about synergies. I'm mm -hmm. gonna start with the cost ones, cost savings. So one thing that we can see is that the cost of sales are the most representative cost in this table. And by combining both companies, they actually might have more negotiation power when they are buying, buying food from their suppliers. So if both companies together have more bargain, bargain power, power, that could become a synergy, a cost synergy that we could achieve. Sure. So we also have the second one, we have res restaurant operation, uh, operating costs. It's the second most representative cost here. If we have, so there is potential for cost synergies here as well. So one of them is if we are able to combine both stores, so you might have one store close to the others and actually we, c we could be able to combine both and perhaps reduce these operating costs, so that could be a second, a second potential savings. And just to mention a third one because it's also relevant, and we can, I think, three of them are can, are will, will give us a good estimative, are the administrative costs. It's interesting to see that Great Burger has a lower administrative cost than Heavily Donuts. Probably because Great Burger is five times bigger. So if when when they are making this acquisition, they can actually reduce or almost bring these administrative costs to zero. So that's an important a third important cost synergy that we are able to achieve with this acquisition. Excellent. Is there anything on the revenue side that jumps out? Great. So for the revenue sides, yes, I think th that's a little bit tougher but if we are for example as they are selling different products if we are able to have some cross selling across stores so if we are able to sell donuts on our burger stores or sell some kind of burgers on the donut stores so it could generate an increasing an additional revenue so as revenue synergies I would say cross-selling as an important one. Perhaps if for we can, for example, we can see that heavily done don't have a strong presence out of North America, so we could actually start to sell their, their products into our stores as well. So the cross-sell is important in the U.S., but I think it's even more important internationally. Okay, great. 
I think you hit um, most of the main points there. The team at Great Burger actually believes that it would be possible to double Heavenly Donuts' U.S. market share in the next five years. They also think that they can grow Heavenly Donuts' number of stores by a factor of 2.5. Okay. So those are their two goals, essentially, that they believe they can do. So would you mind repeating? Yeah, sure, things? sure. So number one goal is that they think they can double Heavenly Donuts' U.S. market share okay. as a percentage in the next five years. Great. And the second one? That they can expand the number of stores that Heavenly Donuts is operating by 2.5. 2.5% in five years as well? Uh, not 2.5%, times 2.5. Ah, times 2.5, yeah. okay, yeah. in five years. Also in five years, uh, yeah. The question though that they have um, to answer yet is what sales per store will Heavenly Donuts require to achieve these goals? Okay, interesting. And I have a couple more assumptions to, to, to give you before you uh, do this. So we're gonna assume um, that there's 300 million people in the U.S. today, and that's not going to significantly change in five years. Makes sense. Um, we're going to say that donut consumption today is $10 per person per year on average. Okay. And that in five years, it will be $20 per person per year on average. Interesting. So it's increasing a lot, this consumption for, for per, per capita. It's interesting. Additionally, you can use any uh, data you find helpful from the, uh, the chart that I gave you. Great. So, let's do these maths. We have, we want to double the, the market share of heavily donuts in five years. So first, first thing I'm gonna do is to calc just just make mark the market size now, and then I can see the the heavily dense market sh current market share, and then we'll have the future market. We will double it and see how much we are gonna have to sell in order to double our market share. Does it make sense? Yeah, sounds good. Great. So let's start with the current market. So we have. 3 million people in the US and we are focusing in our firm in the US now. Correct. And we have ten dollars ten dollars per person as a con it gives us a to um, a total market of three billion dollars in two thousand sixteen. Great. Currently we have our sales are seven hundred million dollars. So our market share is seven million dollars seven hundred million dollars divided by the total market. Yeah, and, and feel free to round to the nearest five. Okay, good. So we have here seven divided by thirty it's going to be something around 23.3%. Is that right? This is, a, this is our current market share. Great. That's exactly right. But for, for, for simplicity, let's just say 25%. 25%? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for that. Sure. <laughs> Makes life easier. So... Let's let's see the, the the future market. It's we're gonna have the same number of people. The 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 volume consumed by person double. So instead of three billion, we're gonna have six billion. That's our market size. And we wanna have, we wanna double our market share. So we wanna have. We will, we, will, we will have to sell three billion dollars so we can achieve the fifty percent market share that we need. That's an interesting number because this is about four times our current revenues. So 
So it's a very ambitious target, I guess, to achieve over the next five years. Right. So as, answering these first questions, like we would have to think on the strategies to increase the number of revenues by four times. One of them is increasing the number of stores. So we want to increase it by 2.5% in five years. 2.5 times, mm -hmm. yeah. And so let's, gonna do the, let's do this the same math. Currently, we have May it, may it work? We have a thousand stores yeah. in the U.S. Yeah. And we wanna we wanna increase it by two point five times. So we have two point five thousand stores open in five years. And here I'm considering that. We don't have any store closing, so those are. We we would have to we, we would need additional one point five thousand stores, considering that we would close no stores. So to do it over the next five years, let's say that we have sixty months to do it, we would have to open about twenty five stores. Per month. Again. It's almost one store per day. So it's a very, very ambitious target. Great. So you've determined we need 2,500 stores. And we also need to achieve 3 billion in sales to get our two goals, right? Right. The final question I want to ask you is what sales per store will Heavenly Donuts require to achieve both of those goals? Great. So our current total revenue uh, our revenue in two thousand in five years is three billion. We have we would we would have our, with uh, with this plane two point five thousand stores. So our revenues would have to be around hmm, I'm just taking care here to don't make any mistakes with the math. So we have three three billion divided by two point five thousand. It gives us one point two million dollars per store. That's per year. It's an interesting number. To see if it's doable, I would actually have to compare it with our current revenue per store. Okay. Do you mind if I may, may I take a second to do this math? So currently we have seven million seven hundred million dollars of revenues divided by a thousand stores. So our current revenue is basically Seven hundred thousand dollars per store. So, in order to achieve our targets, we would have to increase the current revenue from seven hundred thousand dollars per year per store to one point two million thousand dollar one point two million dollars per store. It's almost doubling the number of the sales per store. So what I what I would say is considering that the num the consumption per people is doubling 
as well. Honestly, doubling the the consum the revenues per store might sound reasonable. My main concern is how can we increase the number of stores by 1.5 thousand in five years. If we are able to address that, then I think we are able to achieve those the, those objectives. Okay, great. One of the synergies the team thinks has great potential, you've actually already mentioned it, and that was the idea of selling donuts inside of great burger stores. Okay. And so, I just want to ask you qualitatively, without numbers, how would you assess the impact of this idea of selling donuts inside of the burger stores? How would you assess the, the impact on profitability? Great. So here, I think we have to, to analyze two, basically two aspects here. For one of them is the additional profit that selling one, one donut would, would add. Mm -hmm. Basically is the price that we are charging for these, these donuts and the cost we have just to sell it, so we would have a profit per donut. Then we would have to estimate how many donuts we are we are selling in one store. So we would have the profit brought by 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 selling donuts on these stores. To that. I would just subtract some cannibalization because perhaps we would have one client who is going to buy a burger or one of the traditional offers and he just see the donut and change his mind so we might see that as an additional profit brought by the donuts but actually we lost some sales on the other hand so to this number I would just discount the effects of some cannibalization Qualitative speaking, I think that's how we can measure this additional profit per store. We can go through through this math if you think it's convenient. No, I'm I'm convinced that you that you're on the right track there. If we do the numbers, we found that there is some cannibalization, as you pointed out, um, but the increase in revenue is actually greater than the amount of cannibalization. That's so awesome. there is a net positive impact per store, if you know if we were to kind of combine as a two and one. Um, so that's, uh, I think that, that perfectly matches with your analysis. Um, finally, you run into the CEO of Great Burger. He asks you to summarize your findings and, and give a recommendation. What do you say? Okay, thanks. Do you mind if I'm taking one minute just to structure my recommendations? And no problem. So my final recommendation is for Great Burgers go and buy heavily done it. We have we discussed some very ambitious targets, but I think they are achievable. The first one is to double market share. We 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 can do it by increasing the number of stores and increasing the revenues per store. We discussed that we would have to Increase the number of stores by 2.5 times. It's an ambitious growth, growth, but it's it's again it's doable, and we can see that there is a lot of money on the table because especially because of the synergies. 
So the acquisition seems like a very interesting deal and we, you should pursue it. The only, re the only recommendation, additional recommendation that I would make is since we have that ambitious target and we would have to open a, a good number of stores in a short time to structure a good plan and, and a schedule on how to open these stores and where to open them. Awesome, great job. Thank you. Just a quick amount of feedback.